Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. It's Pastor Jones here. You know what time it is. It's Wednesday noonday service. It's 12 noon on Wednesday, where God has given us this opportunity to come together to worship him and spirit and in truth. Amen. Y'all come on in. Come on in. Hello, Sister Miller. God bless you. Come on in and join us for Wednesday noonday service. It's that time. It's that time. We thank and praise God for another opportunity to be with you on today. Thank you. I see y'all jumping on. I see you. Hey, hey, what's up, bro Jackson? Bro Daryl Jackson, bless you, my brother. Our Lakers are going to bounce back. They're going to bounce back. Amen. Amen. God bless you, Minister Pat Ray. Congratulations on your granddaughter. Amen. Uh, Minister Thelma Washington, God bless you. Sister Wise, God bless you. Amen. Sister Wise, Mary Wise, God bless. Amen. Amen. Good to see all of you. Sister Holcomb, God bless you. Sister Clark, amen. Good to see all of you. Thank you for jumping on. Hey, hey, Brother Breland, God bless you. Amen. Tim and Katie, amen. God bless you. God bless you. Thank y'all for joining us this afternoon. Amen. I see relatives from North Augusta, South Carolina. Amen. My young family. Amen. God bless you all. Sister Tidwell, God bless. God bless. Yes, I'm going to have faith, Daryl. I'm going to have faith. Bronnie's going to come back. Amen. Bronnie's going to come back. Good afternoon, amen, Brother Bell. God bless all of you. Thank you for joining us on today. We're gonna go ahead and get this noonday worship started off right with an old classic, amen, classic, right out the hymn book, right out the hymn book, My God is Real, hymn number 249. It starts off like this, there are some things I may not know, and there are some places I can go, but I am sure. What you sure about, Pastor? Of this one thing, that God is real, for I can feel him deep within. Oh, yes, God is, yes, God is real. He's real in my, real in my soul. Yes, God is real, for he has was and made me whole. Oh, Just like pure gold. Oh, yes, God is real, for I can feel Him in my soul. Listen, what does verse 2 say, Pastor? Some folks may doubt. Do, do, do. <laughs> Some folks may scorn. All can desert you and leave me alone. But as for me, I'll take God's part. Oh, for God is real and I can feel. Him in my heart, oh yes, yes God, yes God is real, real in my, real in my soul, yes God is real, for oh, he has walked and made me, and made me whole, his love for me. Love for me is like you, God's like you go. Yes, God is real, 
for I can feel him in my soul. Verse 3. I cannot tell. Oh, just how you felt when Jesus took your sins away. But what happened, Pastor? But since that day, was it just that day? And since that hour, God has been real, for I can feel his holy power. Oh, yes, yes, God is, yes, God is real, real in my spirit, in my soul. Yes, God is real. For he has washed and made me whole. Oh, his love for me, love for me, is like to go. Yes, God is real, for I can feel him in my soul. Come on, last time. Oh, yeah. Yes, God is, yeah, God is real, real in my spirit, in my soul. Yes, God is real, for he has washed and made me whole. Oh, his love for me, oh, he's like you go. God is real, for I can feel him in my soul. Amen, amen, amen. I know my relatives in South Carolina can resonate with that song right there. Amen. Georgia, South Carolina, Alabama, amen, all over the South. That's how we sang it. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for joining us on today. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we come this afternoon thanking you, God, for this opportunity to come together to worship you in spirit and in truth. Thank you, Lord God, for those who have joined us virtually, those who have tuned in via Facebook Live to be a part of this worship service on today. And Lord God, those who are near and far, Lord Jesus, those who are watching us from all over the country, we are grateful, God, for them tuning in and joining us on today just to give your name the glory, your name the honor, and your name the praise. Now, God, bless us as we go forth in this service and bless those, Lord God, who would even watch this later on. We love you, adore you, and we bless you. It's in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. And thank God. Amen. All right, y'all, we're going back to the book of Matthew. Turn back to the book of Matthew. I'm going to give you the scripture for today, and then I'll do the announcements. Then my beautiful wife will come and give us a sermonic selection, and I'll go right into the word. Amen. So Matthew chapter 6, Matthew chapter 6, I want to pick up at verse 9 and end at verse 13. This is Jesus preaching the Sermon on the Mount. Here it is, Matthew 6, verses 9 through 13. Here's what the word of the Lord says. This then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us today our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Amen. Amen. We're going to get into this. Amen. Talking about the productive pattern of prayer. Uh, uh, part two in just a few minutes. Uh, but we do have some announcements and events of interest for those of you who are within 
our community and for those of you who tune in and, and are, are, are part of our viewership, uh, we thank God for you as well. Just a reminder uh, that on tonight, we will have Bible study tonight, seven o'clock via Zoom. We're going to be concluding, amen, the book of Esther. We're going to go all the way to chapter 10 on tonight. We are just, we've had a great time studying the book of Esther. So many great nuances are there. Join us seven o'clock tonight for Bible study via Zoom. Also crew, crew. Formerly the Young Adult Ministry of First Baptist Church of Guilford Crew is having their Bible study tonight at seven as well. Don't forget, Brother Brady Daniels has his Bible study, amen, on Monday nights where they walk through the Bible, amen. Wonderful, wonderful class. So there are Bible study opportunities via Zoom for all of you. Also wanna remind everyone that we are still working in partnership with the Ridgely Run Community Center to give out food, amen. Anyone within our community or in our area that is in need of food, go to 8400 Mission Road in Jessup, Maryland, every Monday at 5 p.m. And there you can get food. We're giving, we're working with the Ridgely Run Center to give out and give away food. We don't want anyone to be hungry in our community. And uh, we're working closely with the Howard County Food Bank and the like to get food out to those who are in need. I also want to just take a point of personal privilege and thank all of you who came out on this past Saturday to be tested for our COVID-19 testing uh, that took place on our campus. Almost 300 people were tested for COVID-19, I got the official numbers on uh, on Monday, amen. Almost 300 people were tested. We are grateful to God for that. Testing helps to flatten the curve. We get to know what's happening, get true numbers in our community. Uh, this is what Governor Hogan, our governor here in Maryland has mandated. And so I wanna thank you First Baptist. I seen all of you out there on Saturday getting tested. And I, I did it myself, amen. So I wanted to show y'all an example that is not that bad, amen, not that bad. So thank you, thank you to the volunteers, uh, to our parking ministry, our diaconate ministry, our trustee ministry, and all the other volunteers that were out there. Thank you so much. We're going to do it again the first Saturday in October. You'll be hearing about that. So if you haven't had a chance to get tested, you will get a chance. You don't need to provide insurance. Don't have to have a doctor's note or appointment. Just come through to the church and you can get tested first Saturday in October. You'll be hearing more about that. I'm also excited to announce uh, it has been postponed a couple of times, uh, but we are finally going to have our drive-in movie on our campus. We're going to do like the drive-in movies of days gone by. We had to be in your car with your own popcorn and your own condiments and sodas and all that stuff. But we're going to be showing outside under the stars. Amen. Outside under the stars. Uh, we're going to uh, uh, air uh, show the movie War Room. And that's going to be on August the 29th. August the 29th. Uh, they're asking you to come to the church campus around 8.30 p.m. 8.30 p.m. Uh, that's normally when the sun dips down and we're going to watch War Room on the campus. Please come and join us if you can. It would just be good to see everybody. And then this last announcement, well, second to last announcement, I'm excited about because guess what, y'all? I know you've seen the teaser. I know you've seen the commercial on YouTube. and You may have gotten the email, but listen, plans have been finalized. It's going to happen. It's going to take place this coming Sunday. Somebody say Sunday. Sunday. This coming Sunday at 10 a.m., we're going to have our outside drive-up worship service at First Baptist Church of Guilford, amen. I'm breaking news, amen. CNN can break news. I can break news right here at our noonday service. This Sunday, I would love to see y'all, amen. Now, I wanna let you know, 
We're asking you to come in your cars. The parking ministry is going to park you. You'll be able to see the worship service, but you have to remain in your cars. You have to remain in your cars. Amen. Don't get the lawn chair and pull it out on the side of the car. Tell me, preach, Pastor. Amen. No, we got a way where we'll be able to broadcast for you to hear via the radio in your car. We have, we have a connection with an FM station where you'll be able to hear the service and see the service within the comforts of your car, amen. So keep your kids in the car, amen. Keep your wife in the car, amen. Keep your husbands in the car, keep your family and friends, everybody stay in your cars, but come on out to First Baptist this coming Sunday, this Sunday, you'll see more advertisement about that this week, but this coming Sunday, I'm excited to preach to you all live and in color. And we're going to do it outside. Amen. So come and join us. Spread the word this coming Sunday, 10 a.m. 10 a.m. Now, I also want to say that we will, for those who will not be joining us, we still will have Zoom church school uh, and Zoom Sunday school, Zoom for our youth. Zoom will still take place uh, around 930 and 10 a.m. for our youth. But for those of you who can join us live on the campus, we want you to come out and to be a part. Again, spread the word. This Sunday, 10 a.m., we're going we're gonna to be preaching outside. Amen. Outside, God is going to bless y'all. Come on and join us this Sunday, 10 a.m. Look for the word about that. And then, beloved, finally, I want to announce... Uh, you know, uh, it, it's, it's, it's always good to take some time to rejuvenate and recoup. And uh, Pastor Jones and Reverend Jay and the crew have been going strong uh, since COVID-19 hit. So I'm going to be taking a little break, a little break. Amen. A little, just a little bit. Tell your neighbor a little break, a little break. So uh, this will be our last noonday broadcast uh, for this month. Uh, and then we're going to come back strong next month. Amen. We're going to come back strong. So I'm going to take some time off, get myself rejuvenated and ready, you know, because if you keep going and going and going, then you, then you break down and we, we ain't even speaking that. Amen. And they were just ain't even speaking that. So going to be taking some time off uh, and rest up. So there will be no noonday worship on Wednesday for the next two weeks. The next two weeks, no noonday worship for the next two weeks. I know I'm sad too, but pastor got to take a breather, just a quick breather, but I'll be back and we're going to start a new and a fresh in September. Amen. In September. So y'all God be praised. Heaven smile upon you. Spread the word about Sunday. I can't wait to just physically see y'all. Amen. Even if it's from your cars. I'm going to stand where everybody can just drive by and I'll wave. Amen. You can drive by and I'll wave. Uh, and so we are thankful to God. Please spread the word about our drive up service on this coming Sunday, 10 a.m. Uh, and, and let's be blessed together. And I'm going to take a little break, but we'll be back in September. Now my beautiful wife's going to come and give us a sermonic selection. She surprises me each week. I didn't even know that little song last week, so I'm learning something. Amen. Amen. Come on, Reverend Jay. Bless the Lord, everybody. It's good to see you all virtually. Amen. Amen. Before I sing this little song, one other announcement to keep your eyes peeled for September, Saturday, September the 26th, the men's ministry, intercessory prayer ministry, and the women's ministry will be having a virtual retreat. So look for those announcements coming up soon. Now, Amen, amen. I know you all know all these songs. I'm singing a little mel medley today, so I want you to join with me wherever you are. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy. Yes, 
Yes, I know you know it. So come on, sing it with me. Here we go. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his whole. Come on, leave. Bless his holy name. Why? I tell you why. <laughs> hey, because he has done great things. He has done great things. He has done great things. Bless him. Because he has, I can say this. I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord, today. Because you care for me in such a special way. That's why I praise you. I lift you up. And I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord, today. Because you care for me. In such a special way, that's why I praise you. I lift you up and I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. And so we say welcome into this place welcome lord welcome into this broken vessel you desire to abide in the praises of your people so we lift our hands as we lift our hearts and we offer up this praise unto your name. As we lift, as we lift our hands and we lift our hearts and we offer up this praise unto your name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I think Pastor Jones knew all of those. Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you, Reverend Jay. She's right. She's right. I, I did know those. I didn't know the ones from last week, but I knew these. Amen. Amen. God be praised. Thank you, Reverend Jay, for uh, those medley, that medley of songs. At this time, I want you to turn back with me to the Gospel of Matthew, Matthew's Gospel, chapter number six. And again, we're looking at verses nine through 13. We're concluding our message on the pattern, I'm sorry, the productive pattern of prayer, the productive pattern of a prayer. Here's what the word of God says. This then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. 
Amen. As you assume posture prayers for the next few moments that are mine to share, I'm going to talk about the productive pattern of prayer part two. Productive pattern of prayer part two. Lord, we thank you for this time, this space, this place. Thank you, Lord God, for this word. I pray it would minister to those who have ears to hear and eyes to see, O oh God, uh, that they may also have a heart for the things of God. Lord, we thank you in advance for what you're going to do and how you're going to do it. And we honor and bless your name. It's in Jesus' precious name we pray, amen. So beloved, last week we came to you talking about the productive pattern of prayer and the reality is that what Jesus is doing in teaching this uh, as a part of his Sermon on the Mount is sandwiched between fasting and giving is prayer. Above, he has what it means to fast. Below this instance, he has what it means to give. But in the central part of it all is prayer. And what Jesus gives us is a snapshot. He teaches not only the disciples, but those who have ears to hear what it means to pray. And beloved, prayer is important. And I think it is important for us to know the right way to pray. Some of us are praying, but we're not getting the answers that we think we ought to get. Some of us are praying, but we're not really feeling God and the way that God is doing things. But maybe it's not God. Maybe it's not even the prayer that you're praying, maybe you need to take an introspective look at yourselves and see where it is that you need to line up in pattern and structure in order to be able to pray productive prayers. Now, last week I talked about one half of the part that deals with the pattern of productive prayer. And I talked about in that first half of the model prayer the human element or our responsibility, the human responsibility. In other words, beloved, that we're not just mouthing words, waiting on God with all of his power to enact change within our lives, but we have to be participatory in our prayers. We have to be prepared to work. And as we work, doing what God has outlined and structured within this model prayer, then that's when things will happen. That's when things will change. I gave you a for instance last week, and I'm not going to stay here too long, but I gave you a for instance with 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. That scripture says, If my people that are called by my name would humble themselves, pray, turn from their wicked ways, then who will hear from heaven. He'll forgive your sin and heal the land. Notice the if then factor. The if being what is conditional, the part that is on us to do in order for God to move to bring about healing and forgiveness upon the land. It is the if then principle. So the first thing we talked about last week is that you have to make sure that you are making the name of God great when you pray. You have to satisfy his name. In other words, you got to know that it's about his name being exalted. It's about his name being lifted. It's about his name being brought up to a place because without the name of Jesus and without God, our prayers cannot be answered. And so when you pray, you have to recognize the authority and recognize the divinity and recognize the power that is in the name of God. That's why it says, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed or holy is your name. How many out there know there's power in the name of Jesus? There is power in his name. So you have to work to lift up the name of Jesus. But then the second thing I talked about last week is that you have to make sure that you're spreading the kingdom of God, that your prayers in some way lead you not only exalting the name of the Lord, but then spreading the kingdom of God all throughout. Notice it says in the prayer, uh, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In other words, it's about us shifting our wills 
that it's not about my will and what I want when I pray, but it's about bringing forth and enacting the will of God here on earth, that as it is in heaven, so may it be here on earth. And so when you pray a pattern of productive prayer, you have to make sure that when you're praying, you are asking God that, Lord, let your will be done in my life. I gave you an example last week coming out of the Gospel of Matthew chapter 26, where Jesus was praying in the Garden of Gethsemane. And one of the requests that the Lord has was, Lord, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me. However, not my will, that's what Jesus said, but let thy will be done. And once Jesus resolved and resigned that I want to do the will of God, then the Bible tells us in another form of the gospel that ministering angels came to Jesus during his time of need. And so, beloved, what we discover here is that sometimes we have to make sure that we are doing the will of God, spreading the kingdom of God, that God's kingdom may be known throughout all the ends of the earth. So when we pray and what we pray for, if it is not about making sure that the kingdom of God is lifted, sometimes God will not give it to you. Because we cannot be selfish in any way, we have to make sure that we resolve and resign that it's God's will. Yeah, yeah. So we talked last week about our human responsibility in prayer and how our will has to be lost in God's will. But, but I want to conclude this message in dealing with God's divine response to human responsibility in prayer. God's divine response to human responsibility in prayer. See, what we're supposed to be doing, watch it, is we see within this model prayer a pattern, a pattern. I hope you've detected the pattern. The pattern starts off with exaltation. It starts off with the will of God being made known. And then you'll notice a shift that takes place in the prayer. In other words, when we take the onus to make sure that we are responsible in making the name of God great and spreading the kingdom of God, please get this, once you do your part in preparation, then the other side of the coin becomes active. The divine response then, I believe, obligates God to provide for us on a daily basis, watch it, everything that we need on a daily basis. Verse 11 says, give us this day, the first ask of the prayer. Give us this day our daily bread. Stop. In other words, beloved, we are then resigning and resolving that God, if I make your name great, if I exalt your name, and if I work when I pray to spread your kingdom, then you, God, will supply our needs. God will give us our daily bread. God will provide our daily needs on a daily basis. And anybody glad that God gives us daily bread? Don't miss this. Philippians 4.19 says, My God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory. Now, when God says all God means all. That means emotional, psychological, financial, personal, and anything that there is a need. Don't you know that there's nothing that heaven lacks that God can't provide for me and you? Notice what it says. Notice what it says. What he supplies and what this prayer shows us is that it's about what is communal. What is communal? Meaning what is a part of the greater whole? It's not just about me, Lord. Notice the prayer. It says, give us this day our daily bread. In other words, Jesus is showing us in the productive pattern of prayer that when we pray, we ought not pray selfish prayers, but that, Lord, even what I'm asking for, may it be a blessing to somebody else that is in need. 
In other words, it's about the community, not just about me. The productive pattern of prayer means I want my neighbor to be just as blessed as I am. I want my family to be just as blessed as I am. And tell them, tell them, in fact, nudge somebody at home if you're close to somebody and tell them, I want you to be blessed so that I can be blessed. I want you to be blessed so that I can be I want you, wife, to be blessed so that I can be blessed. Amen. I want you to be blessed. We got to want everybody to be blessed. All bread, in other words, beloved, all the bread, bread, what is bread? All bread comes from God. It, 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 and bread starts off as a seed. Mm -hmm. And all seeds come from God. And what God showed me in this prayer is that God says, when you think about the greater whole and you're thinking about the greater community, then God says, what I will do is give you provision. But notice, if you will, the provision starts to come long before you ask for it. Wow. See, God allowed the bread that you needed to be a seed and that seed had to be planted. And that planted seed had to produce so that the planted seed that produces will sprout and provide whatever it is you can't, whatever it is you need. So you can't even see what I'm trying to tell you. You can't even see all that God has in store for you on a daily basis. But when you say, Lord, bless the community and Lord, bless my family and Lord, bless the people around me. And you then say, Lord, I believe and trust in your provision. You ain't seen it yet, but God has already got help on the way and you haven't even seen what God is going to do. But when you get to the place where the need needs to be met, that's when God will provide you on a daily basis everything that you need. How many remember in the Old Testament when the Lord provided manna from on high? The children of Israel were hungry and they were walking through the desert and the Lord said, I'm going to be gracious enough to drop some sweet bread on you. I'm going to be gracious enough. And then when they complained and said, Lord, I love the sweet bread, but I need a little meat to go with the sweet bread. Then God provided them quail. Don't you know the same God that provided for the children of Israel all all that time ago is the same God on a daily basis that can provide you with everything you need right now. He's giving his provision on a daily basis. But look, you got to pray. And when you pray, you can't be selfish with your prayers. See, God is working on something right now and you don't even know it. You have not even perceived it yet. But the time that you need it, bread will be right there. The time that you need it, God's glory will be revealed so that there is not a need on earth that God cannot meet. Now, now here's, here, here's the thing. Here's the thing. This, there, there is not a burden that God can't lift on earth. There, there's not something on earth that you need that God can't meet, whether it's a bill or whether it's you struggling during this pandemic or whether it is that you need soul salvation. Notice all of it comes from God who dwells in heaven. Yeah. And last time I checked, beloved, heaven has never been bankrupt. Heaven has everything that we need. Our God shall supply all our needs according to what? His riches in glory. Watch the text. Through Christ Jesus. Notice the application when you go back to Philippians 4 and 19, the key verse is verse 19, but you cannot ignore verses 1 through 18. Can I teach just for a minute? What they did to move God to provide is just as important as knowing that God will provide. What they did in order to move God to provide is just as important. What did they do? They did ministry and they aided those that were in need. And they kept sending financial gifts so that Paul could continue to do ministry. In other words, while Paul was in prison, because they knew that he was about the ministry of God, the people of Philippi began to give financially in order that the ministry needs of Paul and the people around him were met. 
And so in return for what they did in ministry and ministry aid, the thank you that Paul gave them was that Paul said, my prayer is that God shall supply, my God shall supply your need according to his riches and glory. Do y'all see the pattern there? Do y'all see the productive pattern that's in that prayer? Because of what they did prior to, now in return as a form of thanks and gratitude, Paul then prays for the people at Philippi that their needs be supplied based upon the level of them doing ministry and aiding those who were in need. Oh my God, I just helped somebody right there. When you pray and get on your knees and say, Lord, thank you, and Lord, supply, and give us this day our daily bread, you are then saying, based upon what I've done, God, God, I've done everything I know to do. Now, God, I'm waiting on what my grandma called the boomerang effect. Ruth Harris taught me and my brother about the boomerang effect. In other words, what you throw out there, just as hard as you throw it, it'll come back to you the same way. And so when you want to be prayer and get answered prayer, you got to be answered prayer for somebody else. You got to be an aid and help for somebody else. That's the productive pattern of a prayer life. And let me just pause here for just a moment and let you know it's about a prayer life. It's not about occasional prayer. It's not about occasionally talking to God. It's about development of a productive pattern of going to God in prayer, in conversation and consultation, looking for God to bless you and give you what you need in accordance to his will as you magnify the name of the Lord. See, when you got that relationship with God, God, in other words, will say, if you take care of my business, Lord have mercy, I'll take care of your business. Is there a witness out there in virtual land that can testify that as long as I did what God told me to do, God continued to make the way out of no way and supply my needs? But there's more here, beloved. There's more here. All of this is done when we submit to God's will. And God's will is that his kingdom be spread, his name be exalted. We then do the work that is needed, ministry work, ministry aid, so that God can bless us in return. Come on now. You see, beloved, the productive pattern of prayer, it's what we do before we ask for anything that makes a difference. Yeah. I'm going to say that again. What we do before we ask that makes the difference. Watch it. God will not only give me, watch it, but when I do my part, God will also forgive me. Come on, come on, come on. it's right here in the prayer. God will not only give me, but he will also forgive me. Look at verse number 12. It says, forgive us our debts, watch it, as we forgive our debtors. In other words, God forgives. Hebrews tells us, that, that he remembers our sins no more. Yeah. So if God has forgotten about it, why are you thinking about it? <laughs> if God has forgiven us of our sins and God has forgotten about it, why are we dwelling? And I know, I know we got long-term and short-term memory, but even when it comes back in our memory box, we ought to understand and know that that's a lesson to be learned and move on from that lesson, not to dwell on that so much so. God wants us to know that he has forgiven us. In fact, 1 John 1 and 9 says, confess your sins and what? He is faithful and just to forgive your sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. In other words, with confession comes a deep cleansing. And with that cleansing comes forgiveness. In other words, you got to tell God all about it. 
And that's why a prayer life is important because it's not about running to your girlfriend or running to the bros, I mean to the, to the brothers, amen, or anybody else out there. It's not about that. It's about letting God know that you recognize the wrongs that have been done in your life, the things that you have done to not live up to the standard or measure that God has meted out. And all of us are there, beloved. We've done something in the sight of God that has not been right. But God says, guess what? First John 1 and 9, confess your sins. And guess what I'll do? I'll be faithful and just to forgive your sins and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. And I'll forget all about it. God forgives us. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. And this is big, y'all. Just as God forgives us, we in turn have to forgive others. I do a whole Bible study on forgiveness. A whole Bible. So I don't have time to get deep in the minutia of forgiveness. But God requires us to forgive. And forgiveness is not about letting the other person or, or, or letting the other incident just go by. But forgiveness is about loosing yourself from the shackles of what has been done to you to injure you so that you can move on with your life not being encumbered and not being weighted down by stuff that God never wanted you to be around or deal with in the first place. So Bible says, verse 14, watch it. In order to be forgiven, you have to forgive. Watch verse 14 in Matthew 6. It says, for if you forgive other people <laughs> when they sin against you, your heavenly father will also forgive you. But verse 15 says, but if you don't forgive others their sins, your father will not forgive your sins. Watch it. A lot of times we want mercy, but we don't like to extend mercy. A lot of times we want grace, but we don't like to extend grace. A lot of times we want to be blessed and God to forgive us when we can't even forgive somebody else. Yeah. See, we, we want God to bring down judgment on individuals and to, to do uh, harm to other people based upon what they've done to us. But that's God's business. Yeah. Listen, don't get bogged down in dealing with when God is going to vindicate you or how God is going to vindicate you. Just walk upright, child of God, knowing that you've been released from anything that will try to weigh you down. And God says, as you keep walking, I'm going to prepare the way so that as you go forward, guess what? Them twins, grace and mercy, are going to be surrounding you. Grace and mercy are going to keep you. And when the enemy tries to set up pitfalls and when the enemy tries to pull you down, God has a way to build a bridge over troubled water. And God has a way that even if you get in the water, that you get a plank or a board to be able to swim to where God wants you to be. God will give you what you need, but you have to make sure that you forgive. Matthew 7 has, has we have to be careful with Matthew 7 because a lot of people are thinking that, that, that you know, when Matthew 7 says uh, that I'm supposed to judge other people, but, but, but Matthew 7 lets us know, judge not lest ye be judged. You, you can't judge other people. Learn to forgive because forgiveness is about unhooking yourself from the baggage of your past. And so it is a prerequisite, it is a requirement, it is a part of the productive pattern of prayer to forgive other people. Jesus spends the better part of three verses dealing with forgiveness. And so sometimes well, we're wondering why prayer isn't being answered and why things aren't taking place in my life. Because we're holding and harboring hate. Yes. We're holding and harboring disdain. We're holding and harboring all kind of ill will and feelings towards somebody else. But I read in the word of God that if that person that you're holding and harboring anything against is God's anointed, the Bible says, touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. In other words, I'll deal with whatever they've done unto you. You just keep living your life in accordance to the word of God. Look at it. Three verses dealing with forgiveness. Somebody needs to know if you want to line up with a productive pattern of prayer, you've got to forgive. 
so that you can remain forgiven. I got to keep moving here. I got to get out of here. Look, look, look. Finally, finally, finally. If, you, if we start with God, how many know that we'll end up where God has destined for us to go? Yes. Notice the prayer says, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Some translations say from the evil one. Some translations just say evil. And what happens when we exalt the name of God? We work to spread God's kingdom and we look for God's daily provision and we ask for God's forgiveness. God then will line us up through the pattern of productive prayer. Our lives will line up toward the destination where God wants us to go. And that's why Jesus shows us that, Lord, lead us, lead us, lead us, what? Not into temptation. In other words, God, I need you to deliver, lead us. But Lord, if I find myself in a snatch where I sink down back to my old ways, Lord, then deliver us from evil or from the evil one. See, I believe this, beloved, that God is obligated to redirect. God is obligated to block me from the things that will take me away from his divine purpose and his divine destiny. So God, you know, what we need to say to ourselves is, God, lead me away from temptation so I can get, watch it, to my final destination. Lord, I just said something there. I hope y'all got it. Lord, lead me away from temptation. Why? So, Lord, I can get to my final destination. God, lead me where you want me to be. But, but deliver us from evil or the evil one. Evil, what, this is what evil is. Evil is disorder in our lives. It is disorder that comes around us. Our fight is with the enemy. But God is obligated that when, 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 when the spotlight is on us, because we're spreading, lifting up his name. And when the spotlight is on us, because we're spreading the kingdom of God, that then makes us a target for the evil one and, and, and disorder to surround us. But what I love about my God oh, is that God shows us that as long as you are lining your life up in a productive pattern of prayer and you are adopting a prayer lifestyle where you're constantly in communication with Christ and constantly in communication with God, then God will help lead you to where you need to go. And God will bless you to your life will be reinforced that things that will try to get you will not come nigh your dwelling because you are God's anointed. I'm right here in the book. You and God's anointed. And so what you need to understand, beloved, is that God is letting us know that when you do things right in his sight, even though evil is all around us, and y'all do know there's a whole lot of evil all around us, he will be our navigation system. You do know how your navigation system works in your cars and on your phone. That means there's a satellite up in space that communicates to uh, your apparatus down here on earth that when you need to turn right or left, instructions will be given because you're in constant contact and constant communication with the satellite above. Okay, y'all just miss me. In other words, God is saying unto us, I'm in heaven. I'm looking down. I need you to remain in tune with constant communication with me and I will navigate you to where I need you to go. I want to close with this story. I want to close with this short story and I'm out of here. This is a true story. This happened in Baxter Springs, Kansas. Baxter Springs, Kansas in 2014. Uh, uh, this part of Kansas is part of the Tornado Alley and uh, uh, they found this, this headline that says this, Closets Save Lives from Devastation. Closets Save Lives from Devastation. So, so the inquiring minds want to know, well, how can closets save the lives of those from devastation? Uh, there were many tornadoes that would come through Kansas, and people started, because of the tornadoes, because of what was coming around, they started reinforcing their closets with steel, with steel. 
And, and, and one father and his two daughters said that when they heard what was coming around them, and they began to run to their closet. And the only reason that their lives were saved was because they were in a reinforced closet. But one woman got hurt real bad, and it was because she wasn't able to get to her closet fast enough. Y'all got to get this. Uh, the verse 6 says, verse 6 right here uh, says uh, in, in Matthew chapter 6, but when you pray, God help me, go into your room. Yeah. Close the door and pray to your father who is unseen. Then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you openly. Lord, have me. don't miss it, Matthew 6. In other words, when you run to your prayer closet, anybody seen War Room, amen? When you run to your prayer closet, that's the place where you become reinforced so that stuff around you cannot come nigh your dwelling. See, your closet is the place of prayer where you can talk to God about your problem. The closet is the place of prayer where you can say, God, I'm trying to live the best life I know how to live. So Jesus, help me because there's stuff all around me trying to destroy me. But thanks be to God who's given me the victory that what I do behind closed doors will result in the open to the blessings of God all around me. Is there anybody out there that's going to continue to pray a productive pattern of prayer and lift up the name of Jesus knowing that my God shall supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory. Your best days are ahead of you because you're now lining your life up to a productive pattern of prayer. I'm out of here. Amen. God is good. God is faithful. Y'all stay strong during this pandemic and get in your prayer closet and begin to say, Lord, I lift your name up and Lord, I exalt you for who you are. And God, I thank you, Jesus, that you continue. I'm going to spread your kingdom everywhere I go. Lord, thank you for the daily bread you provide and thank you for forgiving our sins and thank you, God, for giving me the strength to forgive others. Lord, so that when I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I can fear no evil. Why? Because thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell. Lord, have mercy. I got to get out of here. I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Stay with the productive pattern of prayer. Remember, you have a human responsibility and God will supply his divine response. But it's got to line up God's way. And forgiveness, y'all, is a big piece of the puzzle. Do what the word of God says and you'll see your prayers being answered because it's in the will of God. God bless you. Have a smile upon you. Let me pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we come now to the conclusion of this worship experience. We thank you, Lord God, for what your word has outlined for us. For your word tells us right here, Lord God, this is how you should pray. This is an example, Lord God, of what we should do when we pray. Coming from you, Lord Jesus. So help us line our lives up, Lord, to the correct pattern, productive pattern of prayer so that we can see, Lord God, the blessings of the Lord in the land of the living. Bless us now and keep us, Lord, as we go forth on this day. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Listen, I'm going to see y'all Sunday. Spread the word 10 a.m. I got a word, y'all. I got a word for Sunday. And I'm going to see y'all too. And ain't seen y'all in months. Y'all better watch out. Spread the word. Be at First Baptist 10 o'clock on Sunday. We're going to take a little break, but we'll be back. Y'all be blessed. Amen. I love y'all. Love y'all. Amen.